Hey, what's up? Today, I'm gonna compare a $100 Ninja Blender to a $475 Vitamix to answer the question, do you really need to spend a lot of money to get a great blender? In this video, I'm gonna compare each of the blender's specs, features, and build qualities. Then I'm gonna put them through a series of increasingly more difficult tests to see which one has the best results. And the last test is borderline something you shouldn't even do with a home blender. So definitely stick around to see which one of these two makes it through. Not smelling good. Before we get started though, I need to answer the question, why these two blenders specifically? I chose the Vitamix because in my opinion, as a restaurant chef who's pureed hundreds of gallons of soup over the last decade or so, it's a reliable workhorse and currently is my number one recommendation to people who ask me what blender they should buy. I chose this specific Ninja because over and over, this blender is heralded as one of the best bang for buck blenders on the market. And a lot of people in the comments of my videos are total simps for it. And this one in particular seemed to be both highly rated and and much cheaper than the Vita almost a quarter of the price. Plus I have almost zero experience with the lower priced consumer blenders on the market. And maybe just maybe my Vitamix bias is a little unfounded. We shall see. Let's get started by talking about the tech specs and all the features. I got the Ninja Professional Blender with the 1400 watt motor, which is the most powerful model that Ninja makes. That's compared to the 1380 watt power of my Vitamix 5200, making the power capabilities pretty comparable. In terms of build quality, both of these bases feel pretty comparable. They're both made out of plastic. The Ninja comes in at eight pounds and the Vitamix is like 10 and a half pounds, give or take. I will say that the plastic body of the Vitamix feels a little bit more heavy duty and the plastic feels thicker. I think that's because this is designed to be used in a commercial setting and just used and abused day in and day out. Whereas the Ninja is more designed to be used a couple times a week by a home cook. Both blender containers are also made of plastic with a poor spout and they feel pretty sturdy and high quality. Their capacities are also pretty similar. 72 ounces for the Ninja and 64 for the Vitamix. But looking at how these blenders attach to the base is actually where we see the first major difference. The gears used to actually do the blending on the Ninja are plastic touching plastic, whereas on the Vitamix, it's metal touching metal. There's no real way to test wear and tear on something like this in the short term, but it's safe to say that over the long term, metal is gonna be plastic nearly 100% of the time. Inside the jar, the Ninja has a six blade column that runs along the inside of the blender and it's removable. The Vita just has a one four prong blade that pulls ingredients down into what you might call a food vortex. These are two pretty different approaches to pureeing food and the results will be pretty different. It'll be apparent in a second when we start pureeing stuff. Now, let's talk speed. This particular model of Ninja gives us blend speeds of low, medium, high, pulse, and these three auto programs. These programs are really just timers that spin the blade in preset intervals. I didn't use any for this test because in my pre-testing, they really didn't do anything that couldn't be accomplished with straight high speed puree. Also, IQ crushing power, whatever that is, sounds like it was made up by ChatGPT. That's not a real thing that blenders do. What is that? As far as blend speeds on the Vitamix go, it has 10 variable speeds on this cute little dial here. It's also got an extra high speed beast mode for when you need to take blending to the next level or, you know, scare your cat. But I'll mention that I've got a major beef with this dial and beast mode setup. It's surprisingly easy to accidentally mistake the off on switch for the variable power switch. And then you sometimes instantly turn the blender on to 10 of 10 speed. Oh, bro, no. I can't be the only dumb dumb in the universe that sometimes accidentally gets these two switches confused. I hate this feature. Okay, enough specs and features. Time to put these little MFs to the test. The first test is as simple as it gets. Pureed creamy soup, specifically tomato soup. Ideally, we're looking to turn these tomatoes and onions into the smoothest, most luxuriously velvety texture possible. A great blender should have no trouble with this. So first up is the Vita Prep. I just scooped half of this batch of tomato soup into the jar and then spun it like I would in a restaurant, which is a slow ramp up in power to keep things safe. And then I'll give it two minutes on high speed. For this test, I'm gonna give both blenders the same amount of time to break down the soup. I feel like two minutes is more than enough time to turn softened onions and tomatoes into a creamy velvety puree. And after an uneventful two minute spin, I'll stop the Vitamix so that we can see the result. At this point, it's quite smooth and a very light orange color. 
That means that it fully emulsified the fat from the olive oil and the tiny hit of cream that was in the soup. That makes for a rich, velvety texture that sits really beautifully on the palate. Next, I filled up the Ninja jar with the other half of my tomato soup and then spun it on high speed for two minutes. As I spin this, I'm noticing the Ninja has a feature that the Vitamix does not. Both the jar and the lid are locked in place. This is a brilliant safety feature that keeps the boiling hot soup inside of the jar. The Vita jar, on the other hand, is borderline top heavy and could be easily knocked off its base if you get distracted. That can be dangerous, and this locking feature should be standard for all blenders, in my opinion. Bonus point for the Ninja. And after a two minute spin, you can see this soup is smooth-ish, but noticeably more coarse than the Vitamix. Here are the two soups side by side. You can also see that the Ninja soup is redder, meaning that the olive oil and cream fat didn't get quite as emulsified into the soup. That's not a deal breaker, but it'll most likely have an impact on how creamy the soup feels in your mouth. Now, since I pureed these soups and filmed them, I think my perception of them would be a little bit biased. So to do a taste test, I enlisted my wife and partner on this channel, Lauren. Let's see which one she liked more. Very smooth, delicious, still good, still pretty smooth. Not as smooth as this one, so I bet this one's the Vita Prep. Which one do you like more? When you're eating tomato soup, you want that super smooth, creamy consistency, so I guess this one, but this one's just, I mean, honestly, this one's just as good. So Lauren preferred the texture of the Vitamix, but still thought the Ninja soup tasted good. And I think I agree with her. In my opinion, the flavor of both soups were great, but the texture of the Vitamix was on another level. It was restaurant quality, smooth, super creamy, and a real pleasure to eat. I'll give the performance of this Vita Prep a nine out of 10. The result itself couldn't have been better, but I'm gonna dock a point for that high powered switch that I mentioned in the intro. When pureeing boiling hot liquids, that is particularly dangerous. I'll give the Ninja an 8 out of 10. The texture was coarser than I would prefer, but I'm still pretty happy with it. For a quarter of the price, this result is great. Plus, the 8 out of 10 includes that bonus point for the locking jar lid combo. Okay, next we're going to get slightly more demanding and test one of the main use cases for a blender in the home. Frozen Marks. For this test, I combined two cups of ice with a quarter cup of fresh lime juice, a half cup of tequila, and then a quarter cup of agave syrup. I prefer that over triple sec. Next, I spun the cocktail for one minute. In my experience with boozy slushies at home, any more than that and the friction from the blade starts to melt the ice. And as far as the Vitamix goes, it seemed to crush the ice with total ease. This margarita looks pretty slushy-like in a good way. We'll see how that stacks up. Next, I'll spin the same recipe in the Ninja for 60 seconds on high speed. Operationally, both blenders were identical here. No issues to speak of. But I'll mention that after about two to three minutes, both drinks separated and needed to be stirred up. I don't know exactly why this happened. I thought maybe it was my tall glass, so I flipped it into a flatter, more margarita-shaped glass, and that seemed to help. Let me know in the comments if you know why this happens and if you've got a way to prevent it. Anyways, let's see what Lauren thinks in a blind taste test. Oh no, this is, uh, this is a tough battle. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Winner. Really? This one is like ice. You know, I couldn't even get it out. This one's still very good. Like, no complaints. If I had this, I'd be a very happy gal. So compared to the Vitamix, the Ninja Marg was a little bit icier and less smooth, but both drinks were tasty and within about 10% of each other. I'll give the Ninja a 10 out of 10 here because it made a tasty frozen Marg without any issue. I'll also give the Vita a 10 out of 10. Okay, the next test is the green smoothie. This will put the motors under a lot more pressure and show just how much those blades can break down. But before I can even think about starting my day with a green smoothie, I'll need coffee. Thanks to Trade, the sponsor of this video, I've got a bunch of fresh roasted stuff in my house. Trade is a coffee service that makes it really easy to find new coffees that you'll love from over 55 of the top roasters in the country. Since I don't have a decent coffee grinder in the house, I order my trade coffee pre-ground specifically for the type of brew that I use most, my uncool but effective old-fashioned drip machine. Trade's matching algorithm does a great job of recommending coffee for you specifically based on your taste. I've yet to get a bag from them that I don't think is delicious. Truly, they've got a huge variety of different and interesting 
interesting roasts, including decaf roasts, which as a mostly decaf drinker is really hard for me to find. If you wanna get a free bag of this delicious fresh roasted coffee for yourself, you can get one by using my link at drinktrade.com slash Brian and signing up for a subscription. Your coffee will always be shipped within 48 hours of being roasted. And in my experience, Trade has one of the most hassle-free subscription models that I've seen on the internet, including free shipping, customizable plans, and you can cancel anytime. Again, head to drinktrade.com slash Brian for your free bag of coffee with any subscription. Now, a green smoothie can be a special treat when pureed properly, or it can be a punishing slog through grainy berry seeds and poorly broken down fibrous greens when it's not. For this test, I combined the ingredients for the standard issue green smoothie that Lauren and I drink often in this house. That's a whole banana, one scoop of protein powder, a cup and a half of almond milk, a half cup of ice, then the difficult stuff, a quarter cup of frozen raspberries. The seeds in these little MFers are impenetrable for weaker blenders. Then three to four leaves of kale, or a couple cups of spinach, a tablespoon of flax seeds, and then some spirulina powder to bring some micronutrients and to make this thing aggressively green. From here, I'll give each smoothie a 60 second blend. The main difference that I noticed here was that the Ninja seemed to whip a bunch more air into the smoothie, giving it a much, much lighter color. It makes sense actually. As the flax seeds get broken down, they give the smoothie a thicker viscosity. Combine that with the column of spinning blades and a lot more air is gonna get trapped. The Vitamix's blending action all happens at the bottom with only four prongs, so it's not gonna be as frothy. And when I pour these next to each other, you can see how dramatically different the results are. The Vitamix smoothie is a darker green, while the Ninja is like a minty green. Let's see what Lauren thinks. Lots of solids, very foamy, much smoother, but oddly like a more tart flavor. This one I like better because I don't want seeds and solids in my smoothie. When we take a closer look, you can plainly see the particulate in the Ninja smoothie. For me, that's a total deal breaker. The Vitamix smoothie, on the other hand, is pretty much 100% smooth and has no noticeable texture from the raspberry seeds or the kale fiber. I think the main textural differences in these two blenders comes from the blade speed. From what I could find on the internet, it seems that the Ninja blender goes up to about 24,000 RPM, where the Vitamix can go up to 38,000. That's a big difference, and it makes sense that there would be a noticeable difference in particle size. But I will say that speed comes at a cost friction. The Vitamix smoothie was warmer than I would like. I think all those RPMs heated up the smoothie to like 60F, which is not desirable when you're drinking raw kale. That being said, the Vitamix smoothie was probably ready to drink after only 20 seconds. I gave both a minute because I knew the Ninja would need that extra time. Overall, I'll give the Vita an 8 out of 10 here. It's smooth, but not cold. That's weird. The Ninja gets a six out of 10. It was pretty grainy and that frothy texture was not ideal. Okay, the last test is the ultimate showdown, the peanut butter test. This one's gonna push these motors to their absolute limit because grinding nuts into a fine paste takes a lot of power and creates a lot of friction. To get started, I added two cups of toasted peanuts into the Vitamix and then spun it on high for five minutes. Right away though, as I expected, these nuts started to get stuck and the blender motor sounded very strained. So I grabbed the plunger stick that came with the blender jar and stuck it through the hole in the top and then plunged these nuts to get some movement going on. This worked great, and within a minute, the peanuts were well on their way to becoming a spreadable butter. This plunger setup is a great feature that the current Ninja blenders don't have. Obviously, the vertical blade setup on the Ninja wouldn't allow for this, and some people would argue that the stacked blades agitate the mixture, negating the need for a plunger, but I'm not so sure. In my experience, being able to mix things up with a plunger allows you to puree a much wider range of foods that would otherwise be very stubborn. And after five minutes, Minutes, you can see we've got peanut butter. Ooh, it's so warm and creamy. Better than the food processor, honestly. Wow, I was pretty shocked at this result. It was indeed quite a bit creamier than the pea butter that I made in my food chopper. Cut to the grown up PB&J video that I made last year. That's nice looking peanut butter, but it's not this creamy. Time for the Ninja. I gotta say, this blender ground these nuts down like a champion. I can't overstate how hard nut butter is on a motor. 
I've actually burned out two Vitamixes making larger batches of almond butter. That was mostly my fault, but it just illustrates that it can happen when you push it too hard. At the five minute mark, the Ninja butter wasn't getting quite as smooth as I had hoped, so I kept spinning until I got something close to the Vitamix. And after about 11 minutes of spinning, I've got a very, very hot Ninja that smells like an electrical fire, but I've also got a pretty nice looking result. Looks like peanut butter. How's it taste? Mm. Not as creamy as the Vitamix. I mean, still passable, but this has a little bit more of like a hummusy texture than peanut butter. I'm shocked though. I really didn't expect this to work. I was kind of expecting this blender to blow up, if I'm being honest, but it looks good. Surprisingly, both blenders delivered a delicious spreadable peanut butter that was very smooth. I'll give the Vitamix a 10 out of 10. This was by far the best nut butter that I've ever made at home, and the motor handled the whole process like a champ. I'll give the Ninja a 9 out of 10. The peanut butter just didn't get as smooth as the Vita, and I'm not sure you could repeat this feat more than a couple of times before burning out this motor. Now, the final tally for this very arbitrary scoring system is Vitamix 37 out of 40 and Ninja 33 out of 40. Overall, I was actually really happy with the Ninja's design and performance, and it did a lot better than I was expecting, but it did fall pretty short when it came to the smoothie. I was pretty disappointed with that. Like I said though, I've only made about 10 smoothies with this thing, and I'm confident you could find some sweet spot if you weren't worried about raspberry seeds in your teeth, or if you don't put stuff like raw kale in your smoothie. But would I recommend that Ninja, which is a great blender over a Vitamix? The answer is complicated, but probably no, I wouldn't. The Vitamix is still the best blender you can buy, and assuming you have the money for it, which is a big assumption, I know, it is the better blender. You should get it. I can confidently say that the build quality is high and that it's gonna last a really long time. Plus, it'll deliver professional level results at home. It is literally what I use professionally for my entire cooking career, and it is the industry standard. But I will say, if you don't blend stuff that often, or if you don't have the disposable 475 USD of income, which a lot of people don't, I totally get it, then the Ninja is a totally great backup option, especially if you're just trying to make some frozen margs in the summer and some warming soup in the winter. The smoothie situation with the Ninja though is still an open question for me. I probably need to go back and mess around with it a little bit more to find the sweet spot. I know a lot of people have success with these blenders in making smoothies. It's just that in like the first 10 attempts on my side, they haven't been good. They've been actually pretty bad. So if you know how to make a great Ninja smoothie, please let me know down in the comments. Anyways, if you guys enjoy videos where I compare cheap to expensive kitchen appliances, then you're gonna love this video where I compare my KitchenAid stand mixer to an $85 one that I got off Amazon. It's a real ripper. I'll see you there.